This programme has been in part funded by Visit Cornwall. Welcome to this week's Cool Channel. As always, my name is Shane Solomon. And my name is Mike Spinks. Here's what's coming up on this evening's show. Jake visits the Cornish Cheese Company to find out about their iconic Cornish Blue. Shane heads to Shelterbox in Truro and talks to Andy about their amazing work. Head chef Ben Harmer from Penrose Kitchen cooks us Gernard and Ox Tongue. And playing us out, we have a song from the recent production from Roach Pantomime Players. Well, it's nice to be outside in the elements for a change. It is indeed. Spring has definitely sprung here in Cornwall, as you can see. We decided to pop outside to do our uh, bit to camera this week. Enjoy the sunshine, which is yes, nice. Yes, indeed. And talking about bit to camera, do you ever find doing this to the camera is a bit cheesy? It can be a little bit cheesy. A little bit cheesy. Just on touch. And there's the link. There's your link. There's your link. So Philip, this week, was down at the Cornish Cheese Company. I did. Myself and Jake popped down there to find out how they make the iconic Cornish blue. Uh, take a close look at this. So we're here today at the Cornish Cheese Company, based just outside of Liscard, where the iconic Cornish Blue is made. We're going to catch up with Philip, the owner, and find out the process of how this amazing cheese is made. Cows are milked twice a day. Um, we actually breed and feed the cows now to produce the quality milk we need to make our blue cheese. Um, they're milked at 4 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It takes about two hours to milk 200 cows. Um, the milk comes um, straight from the milking parlour here, straight into these tanks. Um, the morning's milking we will use straight away for cheese. As it's coming in the tank, it's going through into the pasteuriser. We find the fresher the milk, the better the curd. The, the milk goes into the vat at about 38 degrees. Um, and it's, it's, we have the stirrers going straight away so the milk doesn't separate. Straight away we have the starter cultures and the blue mould. Um, and that, that gets stirred in so the starter cultures are starting to be active straight away. After two hours we have the rennet and the rennet is what coagulates the milk. It's what um, coagulates all the solids in the milk to form the curd. After we've added the rennet we then cut it and we cut it into sort of 20 mil cubes which are about that big and then we leave the cubes for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes we put the agitators back on, the stirrers back on and they start off gently stirring and then it's drained onto a draining table via a pipe out of the, a control pipe out of the vat and um, it comes onto the, the draining table where the curds and whey are separated and we mould the curd up into the various size moulds we've got. The, the curd in the mould then is turned every 20 minutes, probably four times, and then it's able to be put away, ready for salting. It stays in the first maturing room at eight degrees for probably about two weeks until we pierce it. We don't want a lot of mould in our cheese um, because we don't want the, the blue mould can be quite overpowering, it, it can be quite metallic, and it can actually take away the taste of the cheese, where with our cheese, the, the blue mould is quite subtle and we have the full flavour of the farm, the farm milk coming through in the cheese. So we're now here in the maturing room and we're going to taste some of this amazing cheese. So thank you very much, Philip, for putting this on for us. So do you want to explain a little bit what these lines are in the, uh, in the cheese? As you can see, the lines in the cheese are where the spikes, the stainless steel spikes have got in um, to allow the air in to uh, allow the blue mould to grow. So the, the spikes go in and the blue mould grows straight away uh, on the spike line and then it tracks along through um, all, the, all the gaps and spaces that have been left in the cheese by having the curd at the right moisture level. Brilliant, well, let's, uh, let's give it a go and uh, have a taste. Thank you very much. So what would make this cheese different to something like a Stilton? Well, as you can taste, it's quite creamy and buttery. So we think it's creamier and more buttery than a Stilton. Um, the blue mould doesn't overpower 
the actual cheese, you get a little hint of blue mold, and you get the full flavour of the, the milk from the farm coming through in the cheese then, plus what the starter cultures have done. Um, so you get quite a, it's not a strong flavour, but it's quite a, an in-depth flavour, a full flavour. Um, you get plenty of tastes all the way through the, the tasting process. And um, that's what makes this cheese different to any other, other cheese in the country, really. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to show us around and uh, give us some information about how Cornish cheese is made. And uh, we'll see you again. Can be a bit of blue, eh? Bit Indeed. Of blue cheese. Fascinating seeing how uh, something like that is put together, getting seen behind the scenes. Fascinating stuff. I know, right? So, from cheese to our next piece, which is intense, literally. Coming thick and fast, the puns this week. I tell you what, all over it. Went down to Truro to the Shelterbox HQ mm -hmm. and caught up with Andy. Had you ever been there before? I had. It's one of those kind of places that you always walk past in Truro and never think about popping mm. inside. But they do have a visitor centre in there, actually, which, again, we never knew. So you can pop in and have a look about the fantastic work they do in there, get involved, find out how they uh, manage all the boxes and where they ship them to mm. and what's inside and all that kind of stuff. Uh, pretty interesting, actually, isn't it? It really is. So have a look at our feature in now with our catch-up with Andy down at Shelterbox HQ. So today I'm in Charles Street here in Truro and a bit like me, you've probably walked past this building so many times throughout the year. Well today I'm going to go in and catch up with Andy and find out about the wonderful work going on here at Shelterbox HQ. So I'm here now with Andy, the Visitor Centre Manager here at Shelterbox in Truro. Andy, thanks for your time today. So for those people who have not seen Shelterbox mm -hmm. before, which might be hard to realise, but what is Shelterbox? Okay, so uh, Shelterbox is a, is a Cornish-based um, disaster relief charity. It specialises in emergency shelter for people who've lost their homes as a result of natural disasters or been forced from them because of conflict, wherever that might be in the world. Now this is a very proud thing for Cornwall. I know the reach of Shelterbox around the globe, but a very proud uh, Cornish charity, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. Started in the year 2000 uh, in Helston, uh, kind of an offshoot of a, of a project from Helston Lizard Rotary Club, uh, and it's grown from strength to strength ever since. And in the last, well, 19 years now, we've helped over a million people around the world and been in about 95 different countries. It's a great facility here at the Visitor Centre, and like I said in the beginning of the VT, that I've gone past the door here many times and never come. I'm glad we've managed to come in today. So what can people expect when they come in here? So our Visitor Centre really gives a bit of a window into our world. Um, people can come and have a look at some of the kind of essential aid items that we provide, whether that be tents or solar powered lights, water filters, that kind of thing. You can have a go at packing a shelter box, uh, demonstration one. You can have a little wander around, get inside some of our tents. We've got activities and different parts of the exhibition. So it's, uh, it's a really good opportunity to kind of see inside how disaster relief works, speak to our volunteers, some of whom have actually helped deliver aid in other countries and kind of hear all those stories and hopefully they'll leave um, remembering us when the next disaster strikes. Right, if we can just go in next door now and see how these boxes are put to use. Okay. So Andy, if you can just tell me then, what is in an average box when it gets sent out and deployed? Yeah, it, um, I'll start by saying there's no such thing as an average shelter box. Every disaster is different, so every response is kind of tailor-made to, to that disaster, where it's happened, the environment, the, the community that's been affected. But um, a kind of classical version would have a tent like the one behind us here for about a family of five, um, water filters, water carriers, so people can um, collect drinking water and make it safe. Uh, cooking set, blankets, mosquito net if needs be, um, solar powered lights as well. So kind of essential items so that people can have a family home again. And what's the average cost then, or if there is an average cost, of sending aid one of these boxes out? Yeah, so the boxes with everything in cost around £590 and that's kind of a fundraising figure that includes you know, shipping it around the world. Uh, we also have a really good uh, kind of other um, bit of kit called a shelter kit, which is essentially a big toolkit with tarpaulins and things like that. They're a bit cheaper, they cost £69 and they're another kind of flexible solution to provide emergency shelter. As with all charities, of course, they couldn't survive without their fundraisers. Now, you're no exception here at Shelterbox. 
Andy, tell me about this lady here. So this uh, magnificent supporter of ours is uh, Granny Bin, uh, and she decided to do some fundraising for us by um, doing the, the zip wire at the Eden Project, which uh, at the age of 87 is no mean feat. So you know, she's just a great example of some of the fantastic local support we have in Cornwall from you know really generous local residents. And we're, we're very proud to have her in the visitor center in our kind of fundraisers hall of fame. So people now know through our broadcast where you are. Yeah. So when are you open? When can people come and visit you? Uh, so we're open um, from Easter Monday to Saturday, 10 till 4. Um, and we're open Monday to Friday up until Easter. Um, so yeah, come in, come and pop in any time. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll leave inspired a little bit by our story and what we do. And if people want to get involved that, that next step and maybe do some fundraising for us or find out a bit more about volunteering, that sort of thing, then uh, check our website, shelterbox.org, uh, or you can even call us. We've got a very friendly team of support or care. Um, people who'd be happy to talk you through what you need to do. Superb. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for coming in. I think what you guys do is very, you know, um, inspirational. Yeah, so well, keep up the great work. We couldn't do it without the support of people in Cornwall. So thanks sure. to them. Absolutely amazing. Andy, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, our thanks to Andy and the team there at Shelterbox HQ in Truro. A fascinating look there into the work that they do. Indeed. I'm loving being outside at the moment, actually. It's lovely out here today, isn't it? I know. It's absolutely stunning. Cornwall at its best, you know, when it's like this. Indeed. So we're going to come up for an ad break now, so we'll see you directly. At Cornish Gems, we have over 180 luxury holiday cottages across Cornwall, ready for you to fall in love with. All of our beautiful self-catering homes are hand-picked by our local team and meet the highest quality cleanliness and safety standards so you can relax and enjoy your dream holiday in Cornwall. Whether you want to visit the famous harbour town of St Ives or explore the long sandy beaches of Newquay, at Cornish Gems we have a gem waiting for you. Visit our website to view our tempting collections or call our local travel advisors today. For great food, friendly accommodation and delicious local ales, come to the Griffin Inn in Newquay. Our Cornish restaurant and bar menu offers a traditional menu incorporating homemade dishes using fresh local produce wherever possible. Not forgetting our very popular Sunday carvery and sizzling steak nights. It is the ideal place to stay for business, a holiday or a short break in Cornwall. Visiting Cornwall? Think the Griffin Inn Newquay. Are you missing calls? 75% of people don't like leaving answer phone messages. What opportunities could you be missing out on in your business? Fonetta Business offers a solution with its telephone answering service. Our dedicated business team answer your calls as your business and can text or email you straight away. From as little as £1 per call, can you afford to miss your next customer? Contact us to try our 14-day free trial now. Fonetta. Communication made easy. From the installation of boilers to the repair of central heating systems, we have the experience and expertise to handle it all. We offer a complete range of boiler installation, servicing, maintenance and repair services, along with a 24-7 breakdown service at reasonable prices. All our heating experts are gas safe and off-tech registered. If your fuel is gas, oil or LPG, we can help. Call us today to find out more or visit www.rapidheatingsw.co.uk. Since 1994, independent estate agent Jackie Stanley and her team have been looking after property owners and buyers from the Harbour Side office in Padstow. Covering the whole of North Cornwall, it's important to Jackie that great care and attention is paid to all clients and that herself and her staff go the extra mile to achieve satisfaction for her buyers and sellers alike. Honesty, integrity and discretion are key in our outstanding sales record. Visit Jackie Stanley online or pop in and see her in Padstow. So you're stuck for ideas of what to do with the kids. Try something different. Try Player Ready in Red Roof. They have loads of the latest virtual reality games, including racing simulators with hundreds of car types and tracks. We are also Cornwall's only indoor roller disco. They also offer amazing games packages for kids and adult birthday parties, stag and hen do's and team building. There's also a cafe serving great food and drink and parking is free. Player Ready VR Red Roof and coming soon to St Ives.
Welcome back. You're watching the Cornwall Channel here on Sky and Freesat and on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Don't forget, if you are watching us online, please leave us a comment. Get in touch with us. You can email us at studio at cornwallchannel.co.uk or find us on all of our social media platforms. Indeed. So coming up next, our favourite bit here on the Cornwall Channel, a little bit of cooking. Myself and Jake mm. popped down to uh, the guys at Penrose Kitchen. Who can harm A storm. Uh, mm. Take a closer look at this. We're here today at Penrose Kitchen, just outside Short Lane Zen in Truro, and I'm joined by the very talented Mr. Ben Harmer. How are you? Welcome. Thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. Fish. I'm assuming we're cooking fish today. Absolutely. Some lovely uh, Cornish uh, red gurnard. And um, you're going to demonstrate your filleting skills in a moment? I can try. Well, that's absolutely right. So I was thinking of serving it with a couple of uh, lovely seasonal vegetables. So we've got some uh, Cornish um, spring greens from our little farm down in Howe some hedgerow wild garlic, and it is quite early this year, uh, and some lovely ox tongue, which may not be appealing to everybody, but uh, it's been very slow cooked for about five hours uh, with water, thyme, and garlic. Um, and this is from James Kitto, his ruby red cattle, uh, and some lovely golden raisins, and a little, uh, which you probably can't see too well here, a little um, brown chicken stock. And that's gonna be my dish for today. Well, should we get started? Lead the way. Okay, well, I can give this a go. There we go, so it's, Jake's, it's, gonna, Jake's, gonna, Jake's gonna fillet the fish. It's been a while. It's been a while, but never forget. While Jake's filleting the fish, so I'm gonna take my tongue. Uh, it's quite a small tongue, and literally all I do is, when I get it off him, I slow cook it uh, with water and a few aromats. Things like uh, thyme, carrots, onions, a few, a uh, little bit of garlic. Um, and just cook it in a bottom of the oven, simply, in a tray, quite deep, cover it with tin foil, about five hours at about 120, 130 degrees. And that's it. And what you'll find once it's cooked, it's peeled the skin off and it's very nice and easy to cut. And it will just literally go into a very simple pull away tender meat. So while Jake's doing that, I'll just cut a couple of pieces of the tongue because all I'm gonna do with this is caramelize it in the pan. So it gets a bit of crispiness with this subtle sort of tender, uh, juicy meat flavour inside. Beautiful. Look at that. See? Not too shabby. Hey, look at that. Look Still at that. got it. Perfect. So while he's doing that, I've got a bit of tongue ready. I've got a few of the spring green leaves. All I'm going to do is pull out the stalk. I mean, if you want, you can leave them in. I don't, don't see any problem. I mean, I'll just take them out. It's a 30 second job there. There we go. Simple leaves. Take my knife. Just run a blade through them, just cut them up, very simple, very simple. That's ready to go. So then I'll have also my wild garlic and my sticky raisins. Now my raisins, I've taken some golden raisins and all I've done with the golden raisins is taken equal quantities of uh, sugar and water, brought them up to the boil, simmered for about five minutes, pop the raisins in, another five minutes, plump them up and then all I've done is let them cool down. So they're sweet, they're plumpy, they're sticky, and I think it will work really well with the, the fish in the tongue. So, nice hot pan that's been simmering away here. This is simple vegetable oil. Let the pan get nice and hot. So I'm gonna just start to be ready to, to cook this. So I've got a touch of table salt here. Seasoned quite liberally. Fish goes in, and I should have a little push down on it. Otherwise what happens is it will slightly arch. So if we just give it a little push down, to stop it arching. Because it's quite a meaty fish, I think it'll take a, a good couple of minutes to side. And whilst that's cooking, I'm actually gonna cook, because I'm quite a fan of one pan dishes sometimes, uh, the tongue in the same time. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit more seasoning. You can turn that over there. Pinch the salt on the tongue, just to accentuate flavors, just to just give them a little bit of a lift. I'm not gonna season the other side because I'm gonna be quite sort of generous with the salt on the vegetables. But um, yeah, just to be sort of, you know, don't be too sort of shy with the pan really. So, you know, give it a bit of love. Okay. Um, you know, as you can see, I've got the, the, the heat on quite fast and furious here. I would say though, if the fish was probably a, a little bit thicker, I would probably recommend that when you turn it over, you might pop it in the oven for a minute or so, just to take okay. the edge off, otherwise it, it might still be a bit too raw for some. Okay, so my spring greens have gone in the pan here, uh, in the water, so it's just plain boiling water with a touch of salt. 
And all I'm doing, literally, is giving them a few seconds. I, I don't really want to cook the green beans. Okay. Uh, the green beans, sorry. The, uh, <laughs> the spring greens. And I've got some lovely wild garlic going through that. So where can you get the wild garlic? So I've the never seen this before. Wild garlic, you can just pick along hedgerows where there's a lots of lime, lots of water, they'll grow. It's actually quite early this time of the year, purely because of the weather that we're having. Here we go, look at that, beautiful. Um, I'm just going to give that a pinch more salt. There we go. So, that's my spring greens with wild garlic. So as you can see here, fish, I've just turned it over. I'm just going to give it a little tiny touch of butter. And it's not falling to bits, which no. a lot of white fish tend to just yeah. collapse in the pan. People cook it oh, no, and overcook it. It tends to be a lot of like place in that. They, they overcook it and it just sort of crumbles into mm. next to nothing. And that's the fish there. That's cooked for me because it is going to be on the money, as I would say, because okay. literally I am cooking a lot more sort of furious than you would at home. So now this so, is where the, uh, the art goes into... The yeah, the dish. art of trying to create and, and make a, a, a dish look quite decadent. So, just a little bit of tongue. I'm just going to kind of like layer it up a little bit. Um, another little bit of tongue. There we go. So, here we go. A nice piece of fish over the top. Some people might say, oh, there's not much on the plate there. But it's not about the, the, the actual volume, it's about the quality. But actually, when you start to taste dishes like this, they're quite rich and indulgent as well. And I have to admit, when I go out for a meal, I like to have free courses. And, there you go. And you don't want to have something no. that's absolutely massive. You, and then... Yeah, so here we are. OK, well, thank you very much. That's uh, all right. Can't wait to uh, tuck into it, and uh, we'll see you again. Always great to see delicious food being cooked here on the Cornwall Channel. We're grateful to Ben and the team there at Penrose Kitchen. Indeed, clean the plates up as per usual. Now, coming up next, we have a bit of music here on the Cornwall Channel. Something a little bit different for you this week. Isn't yes, it? and it was good to follow this from the rehearsals. We went down to see the Roach pantomime players yep. in rehearsal. That was back um, in November, I think October, it was. October, it was Halloween. Mm. And um, they put on a fantastic show. Now, we'd love to play you the whole Beauty and the Beast production, but we can't. So, we've got a snippet here of the song performed by Gaston, mm -hmm. uh, which was Let Me Entertain You. So this is the cast of Beauty and the Beast from Roach Pantomime Players. Right, you leave me no other choice.
Let me entertain you. Every week. Every week. Every week. What a fantastic performance. We thoroughly enjoyed yeah. that. And uh, we did record a DVD, DVD. of that for them. And um, full credit, the 50th production. Mm -hmm. And uh, sold over 1,200 tickets. That's phenomenal yeah, for that's a local impressive. pantomime group. So uh, very proud of the guys there. And um, all success to the next year's production. Indeed. And as always, if you have any comments on the show tonight, you'd like to see something, please do get in touch. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you like. Or you can send an email over at studio at cornwallchannel.co.uk. That's uh, pretty much us for our time in yeah. the sun today. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have to go because my head's starting to burn up. But stay safe out there. And uh, until next week, we'll see you next time. This programme has been in part funded by Visit Cornwall. Treat your senses to the finest flavours of South Korean and Asian at Zen Noodle and Wine Bar in the centre of Truro. Zen is a great contemporary place to dine, delivering modern Asian fusion cuisine, all cooked fresh to order with no MSG. Authentic South Korean barbecue grills at selected tables. Truro's hidden gem, the Zen of Zen. Need a drone? Or a smaller drone? Or a bigger drone? Or maybe a battery, memory card, bag or merch? Or whatever these are? To help you get shots like this. This. Or even this. Or you can even win £2,500 to spend in store or online in our monthly competition for only £2 per entry. Get everything you need at hobbymounts.co.uk have you been to Bodmin Jail? Immerse yourself in the history and atmosphere of the former county prison. Spend the night in jail with our resident medium. Visit the tea room. Dine in the governor's hall and experience our fine cuisine. Or why not sample our delicious Sunday lunch? So much going on. Wednesday, ghost walks. Thursday, scary cinema night. Friday and Saturday, after dark experience. Weddings and daily heritage tours. Bodmin Jail. So much more than an attraction.